Okay, let's do our second example. Um, here we have here we have a, a rigid structure, this in black, and down here there's a in, in orange there's a solid gate, so all of this is solid, and it's hinged at the point H for hinge, and that's the pivot point. And it's filled with, I believe, water, and the water is four meters high. And the height of the gate is one meter high. It's also the height of that structure there. But what's going on here is the weight of the gate is actually pushing down and it's keeping the water from leaking out um, here, right? And the question, I'll read the question. The homogeneous gate consists of a quarter circle cylinder and is used to maintain a water depth of four meters. When the water level exceeds four meters, so when the water uh, level here goes above four meters, um, obviously the pressure increases and the gate starts to open here. And then water starts, you know, dripping out or leaking out. So they want to determine the weight of the gate per meter of length to keep this gate down and to keep this at four meters without having water spill out. And what they mean by per unit of length, they mean what's the weight per every one meter. So, in other words, we can say the width of the gate is going to be equal to one meter, right? So per one meter of length, what's the weight? Um, the very first thing you want to do is always, always, always is draw free body diagrams. And let's draw the free body diagram of just the solid gate. And I'll do that in orange <clears throat> because that's the color of the gate. I'll draw it here. We have the gate here. And on this gate we have the weight of the gate. And remember this distance is 4r over 3 pi. <clears throat> we have the weight of the gate. We have the hinge or the pin reactions. And that would be hy. I'm just assuming positive. hx. And on the right side here, we also have a pressure distribution, right? Because all of this is water. So this water is pushing against this gate. And I'll draw the pressure distribution in maybe purple. So the pressure distribution looks something like this, right? It's, it's way bigger at the bottom, so it, it kind of tapers small. And so that, that's the pressure distribution of just the gate. And now the trick that I, I showed you in, in not the last video, but the, I think the video before that, it's a small trick we use um, to get up this curved, because this curved pressure distribution is hard to calculate. So we want to get rid of that curved pressure distribution. So what we can do is we can take the outline of the gate so the outline of this piece, just a dotted outline, and move it into the liquid. So in other words, the dot, the outline of this shape would look something like this if we moved it to the right, into the, into the water. Right? <clears throat> so there's the outline of this. And now this outline, well, what's in this outline? It's just water. So all of this is water. But the important thing is, is that the pressure distribution here on this chunk of water, on the curved part of this chunk of water, <clears throat> is the same exact pressure distribution exerted on the solid gate. It's this purple distribution is the same as this green pressure distribution. But well, now we have additional pressure distributions, and those consist of this pressure distribution at the top of this chunk of water, and also this pressure distribution here on this on this side of the water. Right. So remember, this is just an outline of this gate, and now inside that outline is just water. So now, oh, and there's also the weight the weight of the H2O, right? Acting at its centroid. And that centroid would be, again, the same distance, 4R over 3 pi from this point. And now we can 
Um, actually, let's let's take this free body diagram a little bit further. I'm going to redraw it here. Let's redraw it here. So I'll, I'll make this out. Try to keep it the same here. Um, so remember, this is the chunk of water. And on this chunk of water, we have a pressure. I mean, we have the weight of the water acting at the centroid here. So weight of the H2O. And it's remember, it's 4R over 3 pi distance this way. And we have up here, this pressure distribution causes a force here. Remember, that force is FP. We'll call it FP1 because we have a force here too. And on the left side here, we have a force and couple, right? So FP and CP. And in this case, unlike the last video, in this case, we don't... It's kind of hard to calculate the, pre, the centroid of this, this green pressure distribution, right? Because it's this weird trapezoid-looking pressure distribution. So in that case, we'll just keep... Um, we'll do the FPCP method, and we'll place a force here at the centroid of this surface. And we'll call that FP2. And we'll also go ahead and put um, CP. Right? Because you, you have to put um, FP and CP if you don't make a resultant force and put it at the centroid of the pressure distribution. Okay? So we have FP1, we have FP2, we have CP, we have the weight of the water and then we still have this pressure distribution to worry about, right? This green one right here on the curved surface of this chunk of water. Now, <clears throat> I remember in the last, uh, I, I forgot which video, but I think mm, two or three videos ago, we said that since this is a perfect circle, or a perfect quarter circle in this case, these forces acting on this surface um, are concurrent forces. And what that means is they all point to the same point. So if you were to draw these lines of these forces, they would all point, they would all intersect at exactly one point. And that point is called the point of concurrency. And it would act there. And remember, we can replace um, concurrent forces with just two resultant forces um, in the direction of the pressure distribution in the x and y direction and in this case we it looks like from this green distribution we have forces going up and we have forces going left so up here we'll say this is force V for vertical and this is force H for horizontal right because all of this is pushing that way it's pushing that way we have I guess you can if there are components well, not really components, but just to understand the concept, there's two forces that result from this pressure distribution. And you just kind of look at them and say, oh, well, this one's going up, this one's going towards the left, and everything in between is a transition from there. So we will say, okay, we'll have one force going up, which is V, and one force going left, which is um, H. And... I think we'll cut it off there and I'll finish up this problem um, in the next video.